questions for the audience. Um, show of hands, how many of you are doing a, or um, are in a business to business marketing model where you're working with a partner to reach consumers? Raise a hand. Business to business. Mm. Business to business. Yeah. And um, for those, um, how many of you folks are, are working with a business partner to reach patients who have a chronic condition? Raise your hands. So um, one of the data points that we uh, like to bring up in a uh, meeting like this is 75% of chronic care patients in the U.S. access the internet weekly, uh, according to the Pew Institute, to investigate resources. So if your product or service has anything relative to do with uh, chronic care conditions, therapy, um, treatment, etc. This is an audience that's very important to you and important for you to know and understand. That includes oncology patients, uh, cardiovascular patients, um, and, and other uh, modalities, service lines, et cetera. Yes? You had a slide that had bullet points on, uh, that made a list of your processes. Mm -hmm. And at the top was, Uh, making sure that the variables line up. Yeah, normalization. Right. So my guess is that that is the most difficult step and the, and the uh, step that requires the most human intervention. But I could be wrong. Um, so if you had to rank those things, you know, where do you have to have a human operator jump in there change things or, or think about things compared to the things that are more automated? Normalization is the most challenging aspect of the uh, model. Um, our effort is to automate as much as we can around the normalization process. So we seek to create workflow and workflow rules that, that look for pattern relevance in the uh, distinction between the different uh, data sources. And the goal in that normalization effort is to create a, a key, that, or one or more keys, that are um, that create um, um, comparability between different discrete data sources. Typically, it's a, a session ID or a user ID. That's the, the key that most folks are most familiar with. Secondary to that is a geo key. Where, where are these folks accessing your data from? so that you can verify that your um, user ID or session ID is in fact valid. Typically, it's on the order of 70 to 80% um, fidelity for patient keys. And you start to increase that fidelity as you in inject other uh, key qualifiers. Then it's about how many data sources you're dealing with. And are, they, are you just looking for all the data you can find or you're looking for the best data? And our goal here today is to help you find the best data to create results and to shorten your, your curve between um, discovery and exploration and results. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? So um, can someone call out one company here that uh, at your, your brand name? Would be, would be my ask. Besides ours, Davos. Davos. And what uh, business is Davos in? Preclinical and CMC services. And what is CMC? In chemistry manufacturing and controls. Okay. Um, is the bulk <coughs> of the production from that um, uh, firm in the U.S.? Yes. The marketing activities are exclusively in the U.S. Okay. What about uh, production of uh, products or services from the firm to its customers? Mainly XUS. We're a business development firm in the U.S. selling XUS services. Okay. In that paradigm, um, are you uh, 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 marketing those CMC services to other providers in the U.S., a.k.a. Uh, medical groups? No, mainly the business to business, we're only working as a service provider to the local biotech communities in Boston, San Francisco, New York, San Diego, Research Triangle Park, where all the big bio centers are. Okay. 
And do you find yourself in a translation role often uh, when it comes to uh, creating a product and a, a process to deliver the product uh, outside of the U.S. and translating benefits from that to an, a, cons a, a business partner here in the U.S.? 50% of my work is education. So, yes, that, that's our value proposition is we bring you technical bandwidth that you do not have in-house. Yep. So the, the last question that brings us back to this conversation more closely is, how do you measure the success of that education process? We don't. And that's what we suggest you do. Our, our goal is to, to measure the communication and the experience that you're creating for, for your partners and their customers and identify that the, because whatever you measure tends to improve. It, as, as you get better at measuring uh, how effective that communication process and education process is performing, the better results you're going to create. And my response to that is we've done spot checks. We were about 65% effective. People we contact, we do about business, about 65% of them, two thirds of them. Our view is the marketplace opportunity is much greater than improving our efficiency. So rather than try to catch more fish on a hook, we may need more hooks in the water. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, being that, as I mentioned earlier, emails and personal phone calls are no longer effective, what other platforms exist, like weblogs. I, I'm curious, can you actually find out who's looking at your web page? Absolutely. And trace them back? Um, I had this conversation with the director of marketing at the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, and, and we have uh, data collection fidelity at the point where we're now right on the line between PHI, uh, that is um, uh, subject to HIPAA legislation, and non-PHI. That's how good we're getting at identifying targets. And it's, uh, for many of our customers, it's a little scary because you know, we're, we're accessing data points that are very revealing at a personal level with respect to health conditions and what those consumers are looking to achieve. Um, so we've, we've learned and, and made choices about um, backing up and not revealing that information and so aggregating. I, I, I would love to be able to keep track of who's accessing my webpage because I routinely run it, oh, I've seen your webpage. Yeah, well, I've never seen you before. How can how, how how can I take that information and spontaneously go back and say, okay, I know you're interested because I saw you on my web page. Yep. And you can do that? Absolutely. Actually it's one of the easier things we can do. Yeah. To be honest with that's you, that's actually one of the easier yeah. things we can do. Yeah, especially when it gets to healthcare data. So what we've learned we uh, we buy data from a variety of sources, including Centers for Medicare and Medicaid. And the data we buy from, center, from CMS has a data use agreement where um, we can only aggregate to a certain level and anything below that has to be blinded. Um, they have very specific rules about that. So when you purchase uh, MedPAR data from Medicare, for instance, uh, and you analyze and mine that data and then combine it with web logs, geo searches, smartphone application, clickstream data, suddenly you create a profile around patients that's very detailed. And um, our ethos at this point is to, is to normalize that and aggregate it to a large enough um, uh, case level so it's impossible to define exactly which patients we're telling you about. We can just tell you where they are, where they live, where they work, but we can't tell you more about them because that, that's not ethical. But I, just, talk to just, I know what your name is, I know who you work for, I know where that is, and I know you've looked at my webpage. Sounds very valuable. It is. Okay. Had, had that conversation with uh, Malin Burnham yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. And you may address this uh, this later on, but I I've worked for you know Fortune five hundreds to startups, and I think one of the biggest um, roadblocks is internal adoption of these types of situations, and so. Um, I will guarantee you that there are people that are sitting right here that if you start talking about Google ad, ad, Analytics, they have no idea what that is. And so it's going to be hard for them to sell upstream, right? Uh, and if you can't sell it upstream and you can't determine the value, uh, it goes down to logistically how do we roll this out within our, uh, our system, right? 
So we work for technology companies, I'll put that in quotes, because we, our, our companies don't keep up with the pace of what our consumers are utilizing. And so we're, we're always kind of like in this rat race. I don't know whether you're gonna address that, uh, but I can tell you from the Mercs and Covances that I've worked for, for them to actually incorporate this model, they'll just tap on just a little bit of it. Um, and it's actually the, more, the smaller companies that will become a little bit more nimble and able to actually integrate these models within their, uh, you know, their day-to-day -day operations. And so I, I hope that you address that and kind of talk about um, how to, for us to actually be able to sell it. <laughs> so sure. I'll, sec I'll second that and I'll add that, you know, we, what, what, what I'm finding with you, places I've worked at is, um, hey, Marissa, you know, if someone, I don't, I don't need a website. I can go to a trade show, I can, People aren't going to Google to see um, what what searches they need. They're calling their friends. They're calling people that they know. So why do they need search engine optimization? I don't need that. And and I just am flabbergasted when I heard that. So absolutely what she said. That's yeah, I, I think that incredu uh, the incredulous um, response to that is because consumers don't have that uh, experience at all. We're we're accustomed to finding what we want very rapidly and leveraging the web to, to make that happen. What, what's the disconnect? Why is it so hard for businesses to do that and not for consumers? And I, I would submit that's the core of disruption in our society today, is that, that schism between what businesses are, are accustomed to doing, what cus consumers have gotten a, accustomed to doing, and where we're seeing major disruptions in our economy as a result of that um, activity. Um, we will address that question, um, and it leads directly to the normalization piece. The reason typically that folks take a look at Google, take a look at Clickstream, take a look at a web blog, and they shut down is because you start to realize I have to blend them all into a unified model, and that's not easy to do. So you start thinking about that. You spend half a day looking at it, and you're like, whoa, this is, this is too much. Our goal is to simplify that process make it easier to focus on the endpoint. What are the analytics that show me something? And how can I use the analytics to sell benefit? Yeah. I have to stress something. This, in the consumer marketing universe, this is a home run. It's the way it is now. I mean, if you don't do this, you're fired because it, 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 they know it's not gonna work. And it's frustrating for some of us, us, to have, because we're B2B, I mean, we basically, although the two projects we're working on together is, is to consumer side, although we're, we're working for the healthcare providers on that end, but we're going to a consumer market. But the tools are identical, and what you just implied, Yif, is that it actually should be simpler, because you're looking at a more discrete, more defined, more precise audience, not this huge nebulosity of billions of people, frankly. We're not looking at billions, you're looking at maybe a few hundred people in the country that are the people you want to connect with, or a few thousand at best. And the tools are almost overkill. There's that powerful. And you're right. It's first. Why don't you adopt them? I mean, we appreciate that entirely because we see that that the smaller companies are more nimble. And yes, they can. If they buy it, if you succeed, they get it instantly. In a few months, it's on. It's working. And it's transformed their marketing on that side. The larger because it's the larger organization with the political issues and the infrastructure, and it's moving them out at the same time, which is much harder. But I mean, this is what you want to address. So, just to sum up, there. So, you you saying we already have this data? We're just mining, not mining it. The, uh, is many, that what of you, I'm many of you already have this data, and just not aware you have it. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I'm, as you said, this upsell. None of us here are going to be the ones who are deciding. Oh, we need this. Right. We're going to have to go back to our management team, and who might be a generation older than us. So that's hard to imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, who still think that phone calls and, and knocking on people's doors is the way to go. So there is needs, there's that upward pressure of how do I convince people that this is useful. So I, want to, I just want to summarize one message. What I'm hearing is that you have contacts knocking on your door looking for your services that you're completely ignoring. That you're not aware of, that's correct. That, that is often the case. We often identify surprises in the folks that are visiting you that can help you um, refine the message show a success with respect to one promotion that you want to generate. And based on that success, um, socialize that within your organization so the rest of your team understands how valuable that effort is. And then you can move it to the next level. The hard part is that education process is not insignificant. 
Um, people are intimidated by the data coming in from Google, Google Analytics, from web logs, from Clickstream, because trust me, many of your marketing departments aren't aware of what Clickstream is, and it's increasingly become an important part of um, our business. And they don't know how to interpret it. That's the thing. That's right. That's exactly right. So our goal is to, is to visualize it and then help them ask questions because what we want, what we know is, is going to work is an educated partner who says, I don't understand that, tell me more. So um, we start with web logs, um, Google Analytics, telephone calls because there are people that pick up the phone and make phone calls, increasingly on the smartphone with a direct um, connect on the, the uh, numbers. Click streams and social analytics. Could, I don't know what any of those are than phone calls. Could you explain them? Yep. I'm not going to do that right now. I, I think that you need just, and what I'm hearing is you need to really dumb this down. Yep. Because to me, this is all new. Yep. So I don't know, I don't know what a Google You're going to get it in a lot of depth. You want these to go to All right, well, then, then, then do what you need to do. But yep. you know, I'm going to preface don't know any of this stuff. Absolutely. I'm going to preface this with a uh, admission. My goal is to blow you away with too many data points right now. <laughs> and then to help you say, okay, I can't do all that. I need to focus on these because they're important to my business. And Guy and I had this conversation about three weeks ago. He's like, this is too much. I'm like, yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Okay, so our goal is to create a data model that we can build from all that normalized data and find opportunities and results from. Again, going through web logs, analytics, et cetera. What are web logs? Web logs are the data that your web server is tracking every time somebody clicks on one of your pages, videos, audio files, YouTube videos, etc. Every server on the planet is tracking what are called HTTP request, post, gets, etc. These are called log files. They're stored on the web server um, ad infinitum. And what happens is they're tracking every single interaction between a, a user on the browser and what they're interacting with on the content. This is totally separate from what Google's tracking. So you could sit down with uh, the folks in your ID de IT department, ask them to look at a web log for the last 30 days, and you'll begin to see this huge array of data that's flowing in that is, uh, looks like um, hieroglyphics. When you hear the term big data, that's what they're talking about, because there's a ton of it. There's so much it's hard to understand just by looking at it. You, you need to apply tools to take that massive data and boil it down into something that you can digest, you can understand. What, um, what you need to understand is that 75% uh, of the data uh, uh, gathered on the web today, daily, is from web log data, from servers. So whether it's your server interacting with your users or your partner's server interacting with your server and users, those are all data streams that are very valuable to you in terms of understanding what your customers want and how they're trying to create results in their business. Facebook, independent of that, is processing one and a half petabytes of data a day from their logs. That's social media data. There's a ton of it. They'd love to sell you pieces of it. Um, the, the goal is to understand, is Facebook important to my business? If, if you're a B2B, less so. More likely it's going to be LinkedIn or Twitter, which are much more active at the business level. And Amazon is capturing 200 terabytes of web log data today. Um, if you're familiar with the um, uh, AWS, Amazon Warehouse Services, they're basically hosting um, web services platforms on Linux, Microsoft and other services, they're competing with IBM and Google primarily to host web content, and Microsoft increasingly, they're, they're coming on strong. And in those virtual servers, they're collecting all this same data and storing it and waiting for somebody to ask them, what can I do with this? Do you have stats on LinkedIn? Um, um, we're exploring that right now. Um, we are our next campaign because we drink this Kool-Aid. Our next um, uh, campaign is is LinkedIn centric, mm -hmm. and we're using the um, uh, Sales Navigator tool to track all of that activity. Um, and then finally, um, Adobe has a very nice, concise, clickstream data dictionary. 
that articulates a variety of data sources that are on the market today and they've organized a, um, a taxonomy around uh, the clickstream data points that they are most familiar with. Um, we have that in a spreadsheet. We'd be happy to push that to the group um, through social media or other device.